Hi there, for Throwback Thursday, um, I've been explaining about different TV shows I like, but also I'd like to talk about some of my background and things people have influenced me in art or music or so forth. And so today I'm going to talk about an artist who is probably my favourite artist. I mean, maybe we'll talk about Picasso and Van Gogh, and these people I'm going to talk about, but one person who I really love his art. And he died in 2002, but he was the, the artist um, Abdul Mati Klauwein. He was a French painter of German origin and was known for his works on the covers of music albums. The um, reason he was called Abdul Mati Klauwein, his actually name was Matthias, but he liked the idea of Abdul was because his, um, his father was um, a brick expressionism architect and later the Bauhaus movement and his father was Jewish and the father fled to the British mandate of Palestine. Um, he's, and then also the family fled to Paris when Israel declared independence and Arab nations invaded the country. So the idea of him using the idea of Abdul was a, a servant in Arabic and it was to do with the idea that he didn't un like the idea of hostility between Jews and Muslims. And this also kind of works, it goes in with his artwork. Um, his ideas are very much what he believes is, is surrealism and it's very um, spiritual sort of ideas. So the idea of um, Matty Klaurein is, some of his work is, one of the first things he did, he met Jimi Hendrix, who loved his work, and he also met Salvador Dali, who, who was basically his influence. Within that, he, when within the 60s, he became a French citizen. So with this, he then got to meet people in the art world, and he was very much inspired um, by the surrealism and pop culture of that time in the 60s and 70s. Um, very popular psychedelic imagery, ethnic and erotic themes, erotica and religious art from a number of traditions. And he worked across still life, landscape and portrait. Um, he had, um, also he had things he worked in a lot of art magazines as well. So some of his work you may know, and I'm just going to show some things. So this is a part of one art piece, which is um, a clip, the one idea is from a very famous album cover called Bitches Brew by Miles Davis. And this is one of his art pieces. It's a larger piece, but this is a section of it. And so when we look at all these different art pieces, we're looking at all these different ideas. And he also had, for example, um, the um, Abra Ass album by Carlos Santana was a use of his albums. So again, I'm going to show again is this one, this is cover here. This is a book, um, signed book by him I've got. And it's also some of his friends of Matty um, Clowrine were people like Hendrix, Dali, Miles Davis, and Bridget Bardot. And in fact, his the favourite painter he was actually the favourite painter of Andy Warhol. So with Clowrine, he was obviously a very interesting painter. Really took some ideas of this German idea and so forth. And he did start some of his ideas in the in the fifties, which actually had this very much still life ideas, which was um, more based on sort of the ideas of Picasso, but less cubist. But once he started getting into more other works, um, this is actually the one which is which is actually part of the Carlos Santana armor. It actually was a painting from the 1962. And this is actually the Black Virgin Mary he's got here. And this is obviously using the idea of mixtures of um, South American culture all within this. Um, he also uses some of these ideas of mixing sur surrealism, spiritualism, all within these paintings. And I, obviously I can't afford to own any of his work, but he's probably one of these people that he uses this idea of mixing cultures. So example, this one called Blessing is a mixture of a Chinese angel here on this side. And this is them mixing African... Um, Icon um, imagery as well. He had some very interesting ideas of using these all with these um, surrealist motifs. And again, even in the 60s, this one is another one, this is an nativity. It was like he actually made things which were known as white imagery. Um, some of the ideas also from stained glass windows, but actually made it into using black iconology. And within this, um, he did this many, many times of mixing, and he also had another idea as well. He was very into the idea of astral travel. So this is an example of one of his paintings. It talks about the astral body, 
and these are ideas of where he would see his own self from outside himself and then actually paint these. So a lot of his ideas were actually created from his dreams. So as an artist, I sort of, um, as a, a therapist, I see the artist's ideal and where he would get these ideas from. Now as time goes on, things change. Um, he's also got a few things where he's created um, these very massive pieces. Some of these pieces are actually were quite big. So this one is called Crucifixion he's got, which is literally showing the, all the things of Jesus and the person who's in it, but it's all done in a very much using um, African and South American iconology. He also had a very much a idea of understanding um, different religions and different ideas and trying to see this as an iconic way of looking at everybody as individuals and all as one. He also, with some of his stuff as well, he did actually try and bring a lot of stuff to um, people who may have not known any of this cultural work, um, sometimes causing much controversy at the time. And with this, I found with what his work is, it, it is very surreal, but it's also got this very much an idea of how he decided that he would, um, artists, music artists love this idea. So if you notice that, for example, this one called Live, that was a Miles Davis cover. Um, and then he had this one called The Ugly May Be Beautiful But The Pretty Never Fails. This was for an album called Live Evil. And so he obviously took things to, an, to quite an unusual way. And this is very much his famous album cover called Bitches Brew, which, is, which Miles Davis used. And the ideas of this. Um, and due to the way he would mix with all these different people, he would come up with all these ideas, mixing and matching things. One of the things also with Matty Clowrein is, one of the things I love about his work as well, is how he would push the ideas of what we understood and mixing different cultures. So for example, this is a picture here where you've got a woman here, which is like this sacred woman, probably South American, but then you've got a Chinese dragon. So he'd mix all these ideas and kind of coming up with a commonality between them all. One of the other things as well, which is um, much more in his 70s work, and it's a lot later, is his landscapes. So he would come up with all these ideas, landscapes, and all these surrealist ideas. So he would also try and do this. And this is what makes these things amazing, is that they were all painted. This was, this was all before computers, all before these ideas. So as you can see, I've got some a lot of his original work in books and just some ideas here where he would just do these art books which were quite again they're very they're very surrealist they're not for everyone but I do think that some of them are, there's a lot of intricate work and a lot of ideas which are very depthy and when you read a lot of the ideas of his art he explains the concepts and where his ideology comes from and I've always been into his art from a very young age um, I actually think the first time I ever saw a piece of Matty Abdul Kleinwein's work was just music album covers and just to think, where did this guy create them? And I started learning about him. And these are original books. These are books from the 60s and uh, 70s and some of them from the 80s. Um, one's signed, the others are not. But I have got, I did used to have all his, um, like this, I used to have all the um, albums with his artwork. Um, some of them I got rid of for money at the time because they were worth a lot of money. Um, so I just had to get rid of them for different reasons but so one of the things what I like about him is when we're looking at this is the idea of this how you can mix art history and spirituality and one thing I wanted to do when I'm talking in, in people knowing my profile is because I come from a music and a composition background an arty background is that how that idea and that influence can also help you with spirituality so um, as of next week, I'll be talking about Pablo Picasso and his influence, and then I'll be talking about Salvador Dali the week after, and then I'll be also talking about Vincent van Gogh. And all these people have got these ideas of spirituality mixed with artistry and how they intertwine.